Okay, Itamek's Kanatani. Good morning. It is Friday, August 3rd, 2018. In the latter part of the lunar cycle, Okonoki's Totsitsitsi be when the Saskatoon berries ripen. And <clears throat> I'm on the move this morning. I'm supposed to be out on the blood reserve um, in just a little bit here, doing a kind of a plant tour at some sites on the reserve. So I'll, I'll take the camera along for that. But I do have right now a couple of skunks to um, to move, and this is the first one. Okay. This one came from that same residence that I've picked them up, picked up skunks at the last three mornings in a row. One out, buddy. One out. One out. One out. There you go. There you go. Ah. <laughs> really? Come on. Go on. Oh, he's so mean. He's so mean. Oh, there he goes, squirting out the side over his shoulder. He's got the skills. Go on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Just arriving for skunk number two. This is that residence. Remember I was talking about yesterday that um, she smells a skunk under her bedroom, but there's really no access under her place. Sure enough, though, her brother uh, came and checked this morning and said we had a skunk. There he is. There he is. Hey, little guy. Hey, little guy. Oh, yes. You're a little one, huh? You're a little one, which means there's a family around. Because you are not a grown-up, not a grown-up skunk. All right. Oh yes, I know you're gonna spray me. You're gonna spray me. Oh my goodness, that was a big spray. All over their house there. Look at that. Skunk spray looks visibly like you'd expect it to look. It's like this mucus, sick mucus yellow green stuff. Look at that. Wow, goodness. All right, maybe I'll see if I can hose that down or something for them. <laughs> Anybody remember this area from last summer's skunk escapades when I had to uh, chase down that one that had the Starbucks Frappuccino cup cover, lid cover on his, on his neck? That was just in here. <laughs> Anyway, we'll let this guy go here. This guy, man, he sprayed her house pretty good. I'm gonna go back there and reset the trap, but I'm gonna have to hose down the house for sure. It's pretty wicked. figured out yet when skunks run out of that out of that musk <laughs> as far as I know they don't run out that all those stories about skunks that you know once they spray they gotta like <laughs> they gotta regenerate some spray um, or that they can't spray you when they're facing forward or that they can't spray you when they're in the in the trap all that stuff that you see on the online about skunks is BS these people are putting shit out there you know, online for people to reference about how to trap and work with skunks, and they obviously never worked with them themselves. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, that's skunk number two. Now we gotta gas up and head out to the reserve. quickly stopping by here to reset the trap 
Uh, I'm gonna put some water in it, some food in it. I'm taking the camera trap away because we know now that there's a family of skunks out here. Um, thought I'd spray down the, the walls to what good it's gonna do. You know, really when you look at this stuff, skunk spray is like an oil, so water just beads off of it, you know? So, um, people ask me like, what, what secret recipe do I use to get the skunk spray off? <laughs> You know, that's, that goes along with the whole myths about skunk online. Um, I don't have a secret recipe. My recipe is water and time. Water and time. And uh, it does go away. But it takes a, <laughs> takes a day or two. It's not that long. And it's not that bad. People blow it out of proportion. You know, and they go out and buy a, a bunch of stuff to try to get the skunk spray off immediately. And it doesn't work doesn't work uh, you just need to give it its time so <laughs> there you go some lessons about skunks the reality of skunks now let's head out to the blood Indian Reserve known as Weasel Fat Flats. This is the north end of the Blood Reserve and I'm standing atop a prominent hill. These lone hills like this are called Nitomo and um, this one on Weasel Fat Flats I heard that at least in the 1800s when things were pretty hectic out here I heard that uh, Blood Tribe would put heads on stakes out here, human heads of enemies, you know, to warn everybody off, don't come out here. But it's a place for offerings, to make offerings, and we're going to go look at a medicine wheel down here on the flats um, that marks the, the death lodge of uh, many spotted horses, otherwise known as heavy shields. You can see people have left offerings here. This is somebody's jacket. I, I made a big offering here. I did a sweat with my gun. I study students down in the forest down there. And then the offering that we made with that sweat, I brought it up here. I have no idea if you're going to hear any of this stuff with the wind. <laughs> I thought I'd drop drive up here to see if the offering was still around. It's been years, you know, six, seven years at least. And I'm not finding any remains of it. It was one of my old uh, Gun I Studies promotional jackets that I made my offering with. But there's other offerings up here, you know, this is one of those places that people still come with their prayers and all of that. You can see here. This is a classic, classic big Blackfoot offering. You know, you got the, you got the sun. You got the moon represented by this seven for seven winter moons. Seven eagle plumes. You got your morning star. So yeah, let's go down here on the flats, and we'll go look at the um, we'll go look at the many spotted horses medicine wheel. That's the hill we were just on top of, and this compound here marks the, or encloses, the Many Spotted Horses medicine wheel. Now, I'm not a fan at all of this chain link barbed wire fencing crap around um, these kind of sites. You know, I've traveled a bit and when I was
was in Scotland and England, what really impressed me was their sites, their old sacred sites like this, their stone sites, um, did not have any of this fencing stuff that's supposed to be for protection. You know, I think the reason that this goes up, well, I know that the reason that this goes up is because people worry about someone coming out and vandalizing the site. But I think this draws attention to the site and it, and it just, the aesthetics is just ridiculous. You know, it just, it just makes it look ugly. That's not how this place should be. It should be wide open. And I saw um, ancient stone sites in the UK right in the middle of neighborhoods in their neighborhood parks and stuff like that wasn't molested because it was presented in a different way it wasn't presented like this I think this tempts people I think this uh, it, this this just speaks to having no confidence in the humans um, to respect the place whereas if you did a little bit of public education you wouldn't need this fence people would take pride in having this out here so I'm waiting for my group to show up um, this is the many spotted horses medicine wheel here I don't know if you can appreciate what we're looking at here but there's a large <coughs> circle a large stone circle here and there are lines radiating off radiating off radiating off radiating off so there's four lines so it's it's like a you know, it's the classic kind of medicine wheel. Um, but what this what this is, you know, to me, from what I know of of uh, from the Blackfoot tradition, and you would you would probably hear different from others. You know, some people will say that these lines represent ways that many spotted horses traveled and this kind of thing. But to me, this is a classic kind of medicine wheel design and <clears throat> it represents the sun the moon in the in the crossing in the crossing you get a you get in the in the very first crossing you get a halving of the sun right you get two halves two crescents and then with the other crossing you get the morning star so to me it's the sun and moon and morning star but this circle itself is the is the death lodge of many spotted horses who is a very famous blood tribe kind of uh, chief the turn of the century he's also known as heavy shields in fact today the family pretty much carries that name heavy shields a lot of people still come out here to make offerings um, Many Spotted Horses was famous for a lot of things, uh, but but primarily his wealth. You know, the reason he's called Many Spotted Horses because he had a lot of Pinto horses, upward of 300 Pinto horses um, at the at around the 1850s to 1870s. This guy killed 10 people in his life in his lifetime, and two of them. He killed at the same time. They were riding a uh, double on a horse and he came up on them with a club and knocked them off either side of the horse, uh, braining them, killing them. And for that deed, he was able to have a 30 hide, 30 buffalo hide teepee, which means a teepee that's made of 30 buffalo hides. It's huge, it takes two horses fully committed just to haul it from camp to camp. Um, <clears throat> many spotted horses had 10 wives, 31 children at the time of the signing of Treaty uh, 7 in 1877. He also signed the 1855 Lame Bull Treaty with the United States. And he just He's just very famous, a, a, a warrior of the Blood Tribe. This is where he was laid to rest and um, this is the monument to his life. So I think my class is showing up here pretty soon. And um, 
I just wanted to say a few things about this place before they get there because I probably won't videotape my <laughs> my own discussion with them about this place which will add a little bit more Yeah, so I met up with my group, uh, gave my little introduction to the Many Spotted Horses medicine wheel, and now we are moving toward the Box Canyon. Um, same place I took that artist group not too long ago. So this is the plant. Okay. Oh, actually, I don't even, oh, let's see. Let's see if the stem is even, this might even be a tumbleweed, so we might not dig it. Let's see. Oh no, I think the base is right here. Alright, so this is a, this might be a good example. You can check out what the plant is like. Now someone, you know, in the past, this is your main source of carbohydrates, right? So you, you got to dig hundreds of these to last through the year per family, you know. Saskatoons are a part of Blackfoot tradition. This is, and this has been lost. Eh? Everybody's turned to potatoes. It's, it's not. It's not a surprising that the potato farm is on the same strip of land. <laughs> so this has a, a kind of a skin to it, and you can peel that skin off. starchy root, eh? Hey? So, because it's already flowered and stuff, like, 
this is this is really the end of summer is almost the worst time to, to pick roots because this is where they're gonna be at their woodiest. This is still you know edible and everything but you'll get a lot of more chewy stuff with this now than you would if you harvested it in May or June. You know? Have you ever tried them? Oh yeah. How do they taste like potatoes or turnips? Um, not exactly like either. They're really bland. I'm gonna give you a piece so you can try it. Um, <laughs> you can eat them raw, you can eat them cooked. Um, you can put them with a grater, hey? And uh, grate them and add them to like berry soup and stuff to thicken the soup. Um, but this was this was really the core vegetable plant of the past. the springtime April May even in March if it's thawed out this is a big waterfall here yeah yeah it's really cool I go down there underneath and you know <laughs> like a hippie take a bath in the waterfall <laughs> yeah there's owl nests there's usually some falcon nests in the canyon here And this is, this is an important hunting site in the past. I mean, there's still guys that use it today. But, yeah, there's, there's owls. You see them? They're down in the tree. Yeah, it's the kind of place where you can kind of get a group together and herd the bison and stuff into this canyon and they're stuck you know the ground is pretty hard in the summer yeah it's got a carroty nutty kind of thing to it oh you got one there you go Get a nice big one. Is it these ones? Yep. Yeah, there's no shortage in this area to choose from. <laughs> All right, back in town now, and it's evening time, about eight o'clock in the p.m., and we have a rattlesnake call in the canyons here, out of Canyon View Place, one of the residences I've visited a couple of times already this season. So, sounds like the snake is moving from the residence, from the yard, maybe across the street into the manicured park. So I'm gonna go grab it and wrangle it back to the coolie. Hope you enjoyed the couple of places we got to visit on the Blood Reserve today. I know you didn't get the full effect, the learning effect uh, of that route that I was showing the students. I'm gonna have to go out in the coolies here and do a video so I can show everybody on YouTube like up close how you identify and find that that route moss and uh, You know what it's all about My focus was really on the clients and students more than the camera today, you know, so um, But we'll get to that right now though. Let's go check out rattlesnake Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I need some sirens and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just too relaxed. Eh? We're not. <laughs> Just right. Right, in the bush. Right, right on the edge of that bush there. Right. Video set up. Oh yeah. Here before, so. <laughs> Sign a waiver. You just, it's just your lucky day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hold on. I'll bring it out there for you to check it out. So where do you put it To the winter dens. Yeah, over there, right? Um pretty much a little ways down the coulee. Listen to it. Oh wow. Because it's oh. species diversity is important and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ecology. <laughs> no, but We're not so God. There's so many of them now. Like that's. There's always been. Is how to identify it. Five petal palmate leaf. If it's got seven, if it's got nine, it's not right. It's usually when it's, you know, when the plant's at its best stage, this is nice green. They got these flowers that are kind of like clover flowers. And as you can see, the stem breaks off. That's why I was telling the students. This time of year, the stem breaks off from the from the root and becomes a tumbleweed, so it's really hard to find the roots this time of year. You really got to get at them earlier. But this is a this is the core vegetable food, like um, like potatoes for the Blackfoot. There's also a wild carrot. I was showing the students today too, but we don't have that in Lethbridge, so I can't show you that one. Anyway, let's get this big girl out of here. <laughs> 